What if Uber and Lyft mark done to the appetite for the next unicorn deal? Well, I think there's two ways to look at this, right? The first way is from the private markets perspective, which is I think they've given everybody the sense that we can build with a lot of capital great companies. What they've done for the public markets is, of course, a negative because they've waited too long to take their companies public. And as a result, uh, you see what happens with their share price. Their share price is below their IPO price. And I think that long term for the tech industry is not a good phenomenon. Mark, what's so important here, and this goes back to your accounting and consulting background with Arthur Anderson, is the idea that tech gets to play by a set of different rules. They do the extrapolative process of funding, and then to liquefy, they throw off a little tiny teensy weensy bit of a stub equity offering. Is that game about done? I certainly hope it is because fundamentally I think the pendulum has swung too far. In the old days when we were taking companies public, we were taking them at slightly lower valuations, allowing then the public markets to, to, to benefit on the upside. And, and we changed that a few years ago with, with, as we started funding all these unicorns and delaying the, the IPOs of these businesses. So fundamentally I don't think it's good. Hopefully the pendulum will swing a little f f closer to the center where, where ultimately both sides of this equation can make some money. Um, Mark, what's left to be disrupted, right? So if you look at the big valuations, it's basically, you know, companies that kind of do what you, we used to do but disrupted the way we do yeah. it. Is health the kind of the lost Eldorado? I think health is the biggest Eldorado that we have in front of us for the next 15 to 20 years. You know, 10 years ago, fintech was this great promise out there. Um, we can argue whether fintech has delivered on that promise, but what I can tell you for sure is that fundamentally healthcare will be a big driver of valuation because we care about it personally. But how? How will it be disrupted? Is it how you see your doctor? Is it actually I think medical expense? Is it aging? Well, look, there's the, those are three very interesting subjects, right? I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a broad spectrum of things. It'll start off first and foremost by how we ultimately deal with doctors, right? GPs are overwhelmed around the world in, in the developed countries, in the non-developed countries they're not. And so fundamentally software is going to play a big role in how we take the work away from doctors and allow them to focus on the cases that really matter. According to our research, seven out of ten doctors visits shouldn't happen. They happen in Europe and the U.S. just because they can. Right? Why is Europe so bad at making unicorns? We're not bad about it, but we... But well, we're we, not as good as the U.S. That's true. Well, I, I, if, I, if I had to pick one thing, as I would say, we'd have not used stock options effectively enough here. The company where I'm chairman, Wix, uh, we have 2,800 employees. We have 200 millionaires in dollars in the company because when we funded the business and took it public, we were particularly generous with stock options. I think that is the thing Europe has done very poorly. How does that change? How do you explain to Mr. McCraw that if he wants to hold a lot of cocktail parties to be techy, 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 that what he's really got to do is motivate and incentivize people? It's not there, isn't it? That's correct. I think, I think from a legislative perspective, Europe hasn't figured out this yet. But I think that's some, we, we tend to hide behind that a little bit as, as, as investors and entrepreneurs. 